Welcome back, Friendly Targets. Today we're looking at the Bellicose and how I've been using it for solo PvP and Faction Warfare. I've been making some really good money via LP and uh, Faction Warfare complexes with this ship and getting some decent fights along the way. This isn't a hidden gem of a ship. It really is not meant to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, start at zero, full-on brawl with other combat cruisers, but if flown correctly, you can get fights you normally wouldn't and win them. Uh, anyways, out of the four combat support ships, I think the Bellicose is the best option for solo PvP, followed closely by the Arbitrator, but versus the Arbitrator, I think the Bellicose would win most fights, given an equally skilled pilot with the right flying style. What we have here is basically taking advantage of every bonus we can on this ship. That means using a target painter instead of a web fire, and acknowledging that it now has an explosion velocity bonus, which I swear I do not remember, remember this ship having an explosion velocity bonus before I went on break. It might have and I overlooked it, but it does now, so that's great for getting fights against smaller ships as well, and dealing with uh, assault frigates and faction frigates, all that good stuff. Now I mentioned flight style. This ship has a very unique flight style that's not quite brawly, not quite kitey, nor is it a scram kite. Now in most of the videos you're going to see is one of two fits using scrams, uh, but in this particular fit that I'm going to show you first, I think a disruptor is a better way to go. I usually use a scram in my area because of certain ship types, but in most situations for most pilots you're going to be better off using a disruptor, even though you're not intending on kiting. 
you're intending to apply maximum damage, and that means using rage against cruisers because of the target painter and the explosion velocity bonus, you're pretty much going to get your max DPS. Now, I'm not a number cruncher because I've been wrong before about numbers, but when I'm hitting cruisers with rage, it feels like I'm doing all of my damage. Now, for this first fit I'm going to go over is a fit that I think would really shine in small gang PvP, uh, small skirmishes, because you are applying good damage with this ship, and your target painter is a damage multiplier for other ships, especially if you're shooting smaller ships. Now, with max Mimnitar ship skills and max specialized assault missile skills, you're going to be looking at a cold damage of about 550 DPS. I'm using a 3% assault missile um, implant and a 3% all missile implants, and those run about 25 million each. However, I didn't start using those implants so I could fly this ship. I started using those implants after I was having a lot of really good fights in this ship. And since it's something I'm going to be flying a lot, I figure I might as well give myself a boost. But I wasn't using those to fly the ship. They were just a result of a good situation. Now for this first fit, I used this a lot in solo PvP, and you'll see some good fights with it. So it can be used in solo, but like I said, this one really shines small gain, high DPS, Fights. For the rigs, we got two core defense field extenders, one EM shield reinforcer, we're using Tech 2 hams, we're using an enduring micro warp drive, a compact warp disruptor. In most of my fights, you're going to see a scram, but like I said, the disruptor is uh, usually going to be the better way to go. Uh, scram is situational and might save your butt if you're fighting a specific style of ships, but in most situations, the disruptor is the way to go. And then a target painter, of course, Tech 2, Tech 2 large shield extenders, uh, and we've got ballistic control units and a damage control. This is the cleanest and probably the most well-optimized fit I was able to come up with. I mean, and it is tight. You only got four CPU left, 9.7 on the power grid, but we don't need any fitting rigs, which is really nice. Just makes the ship look clean and feel confident. Uh, for drones, we go for max DPS because most of our fights, and all of our fights, are going to be close range. And these drones are actually a fair bit of your damage. Um, using two hobgoblins and three hammerheads will give you the max damage you can get out of the drones on the ship. We will go over the specific flying style of this ship, but first we're going to look at the other fit. Now this fit does not look as clean or well optimized, but in my opinion for straight up solo PvP and hunting, this is a better way to go. With the other ship, you don't go hunting with that fit. You do not want to punch into a medium occupied plex, because if the person is in something like a Vexor, Rupture, Thorax, MOA, you know, all the combat cruisers, and they're sitting zero on the beacon and you punch in with that first fit, you're probably going to get out brawled and you're going to die. With this one, you can punch into plexes that are occupied and still stand a really good chance of winning the fight. With the extra large ancillary shield booster and the invulnerability field, you basically got a massive burst tank. But because it's a burst tank, I don't think this one's as good for small gang PvP. Also, it's an afterburner fit. So you're slow and you might get alpha in small games. So not really the way to go. It can do it but it's not my first choice. For this fit, of course, we're still using the heavy assault launchers. We'll go ahead and throw some missiles in there so we can see the damage. Okay, we got afterburner, scram, target painter, XLASB, and vulnerability field. We got two ballistic controls, one damage control, and then a coprocessor and all fitting rigs. We got an overclock CPU and two ancillary shield boost, or, and sorry, two ancillary current routers. Okay, the drones are the same, ammo's the same. For ammo on both of these fits, I make sure I have EM and explosive. Uh, I have the Navy missiles, the Javelins, and the Rage of both variants. Now with this fit, you're gonna lose a little bit of DPS versus the other one, okay? But we're still gonna pump out over 600 DPS when heat. And because these heavy assault missile launchers overheat for so long, in most 1v1 fights, you'll be able to overheat them for the entire duration of the fight, even if the opponent's pretty tanky. So that means 600 DPS non-stop, assuming you have max skills and the 3% implants. You can, however, swap out the damage control for another ballistic control if you want more damage and you'll still have a really strong tank but the problem is uh, in a lot of situations the damage control saved me because I was late on a rep cycle I was dealing with other modules or manual piloting and I didn't hit the 
shield booster in time, and without the damage control, your armor and your structure just melts. So I really like having that on there. A little bit longer, the extra tank makes up for the slight loss of DPS because you're only losing one ballistic control unit. Now most small ships, assault frigates, faction frigates, won't try and bother you. A few of the brave ones will in the really shiny ships. Usually they assume that you're rapid light missile fit. Unless they're a pro pilot who checks Z-kill before they fight you, then they'll know better. But usually the small ships will tend to avoid you, and most of the fights you're going to get are going to be against other cruisers. If you do happen to come up against a small ship, you'll load your faction ammo and take advantage of overheating the target painter with the explosion velocity bonus and use a crash booster to pretty much make them regret their decisions. For running the complexes, this can easily do mediums, larges, and opens. It melts through the medium rats and does really good damage against the large and open. So your isk to time efficiency as far as plexing goes is pretty good. For the rats in a Mars space, you would obviously want to use the Mjolnir Rage to apply max damage. A nice little thing CCP add is that when neutral pilots enter a plex that are not faction warfare pilots, it gives them the suspect status. And you can see in local the moment somebody activates one of the acceleration gates. I can see that there's obviously two people coming in. I didn't expect the rook, but uh, what are you going to do with Tamar space? Anyways, the Sunsis is an easy kill, but I got to kill it fast, so I'm going to get jammed here pretty soon. I, ha I have low grade jackals. Um, for whatever they're worth. They're probably one of the most useless implants in the game, but they're cheap for me, so I plugged them in. And they might have saved me from getting jammed on this first cycle, as I loaded any faction ammo to quickly deal with the Sunsis, and then I poked the defenses of the Rook to see what I could maybe do against it, but my buffer being so low and needing to switch to EM damage at this point in the fight is not going to work in my favor so I take advantage of the fact that I have a scram on this particular fit to make sure he can't MWD to catch up with me and then I just burn away and warp off. Yay E-War! Here we have a really nice solid 1v1 with a Tech 1 cruiser up against a rupture. Now the rupture by all means should be able to kill a bellicose if you start at zero so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start about 20k away from the beacon, and then I'm going to start manually piloting to keep my rage missiles in range. Now, rage on this ship only has a 17 kilometer range, but you want to take advantage of the, of the fact that they're going to try and micro warp drive towards you. The Bellicose is a pretty fast ship with a micro warp drive. I'm pushing about 2,000 meters a second, so I can outrun most combat cruisers. Uh, maybe not the stabber, but, you know, stabber so fast. Anyways, I know at the beginning of the fight, since he's punching into the plex, he's going to try to go for me. So I can spend this little bit of time applying as much damage as possible before committing to the fight and going in for a scram. Now, if you're a disruptor fit, you just throw the disruptor on him right away for the whole fight and try and stay outside his gun range and only burn in if your cap is under pressure and you need to hold point by turning off the micro warp drive. As you can see, I get enough damage on him to comfortably commit to scram, and I make sure I go in and get that scram before he decides it's time to bail. Remember, when they're punching into you, they want the fight, so they're going to try and go for you. That means you don't have to go get that point right away unless you're using the disruptor. This was a high DPS fit. He only had one repper, so I made quick work out of him with uh, 650 DPS on this particular fit. This is one of my favorite things to do when I'm outclassed and outgunned, as well as outnumbered. Gate bait. And the Bellicose is probably one of the best combat ships to do that with, or support combat ships. As people see a Bellicose and they think, squishy, easy kill, not a lot of damage. The buffer on this ship isn't anything to write home about, it's decent, but nobody's expecting 650 DPS from a Bellicose. That's what I'm banking on. Is that, plus the 300 DPS of the gate guns, and this Stratios gets a little too overconfident. So does his Caracal buddy. Now they were fighting this Kaidi Destroyer, and I just happened to slip in and get the Stratios' attention. I act a little skittish at first, kiting around the battlefield, making it seem like I'm not interested, but I let him come in and engage me on the gate. This gives him the gate guns, and then I just overheat everything and melt his face. Luckily, the Caracal got slightly distracted by the Kaidi Destroyer, who I'm not affiliated with and later killed me anyways. 
But uh, that was good because it means I can focus all my energy on the Stratios. And then once the Strat's dead, the Karkle comes in and for some reason does the exact same thing, thinking he's going to survive. As you see, the Stratios' drones are barely touching me. Um, if he's using heavies, which yeah, he is ogres, they're not really going to hit a bellicose all too well. Even with a micro warp drive turned off, just manual pilot around the Stratios, and those ogres don't do much. So we kill him, and then we go for this Karakul. Nothing else really to say here. It's a great way to get fights when you're outclassed and outgunned. Bait on a gate. Faction cruisers, some Tech 2 cruisers, they would probably avoid the Tech 2s, but some of them are overconfident, and you might get a good kill out of it. Yeah, this is just a great way to go. <laughs> This fight is essentially a repeat with different people. I was in a Plex and a Hawk with a Stratios came in. Well, I obviously can't fight those. Maybe the Hawk by itself, but I warped to a gate. The Hawk goes in to get point thinking he can use his, uh, what is it, assault damage control to negate the gate guns long enough for the Stratios to come in. But that doesn't work out in his favor. Now I preloaded damage for the Stratios because I know the Hawk was going to die quickly and I didn't want to waste time switching over to explosive damage for the armor tank on the Stratios. After the Hawk goes down, we go over to the Stratios. Now in this case, they were already applying quite a bit of damage to me because the Hawk had me webbed and that allowed the heavy drones to do their thing. Now this was a fantastic fight. We got a double KO, but because it's in one of my home systems after I died, he died. I warped to the station, grabbed another ship, and scooped up all the shiny loot while they sat around in rookie ships and couldn't do anything about it. Yay, bellicose PvP. Now, if you run into assault frigates, you usually you're going to want to pop a crash booster. I already had one installed from a previous fight, so that worked in my favor. I'm using my Navy missiles in this particular fight, and because it's an Inyo, which are usually brawly up in your face, I decide to skirt around the battlefield to get as much damage on him as possible. Now, I make sure that I don't get too far away from him, because I don't want him to get deterred and warp off. So I do eventually let him get the scram, even though I know I'm faster than him, and I don't have to do that. And this is one of the good things about this ship, is you can decide side if you want to stay and fight or if you just want to plex and earn LP. Now, in this case I wanted to see how well this ship does against an assault frigate. Now, I know he has an assault damage control, I have no idea when he pops it during the fight, but it's not a problem because they nerf those, they don't last as long anymore, and I know I have enough buffer to outlast his DPS even if he does get on top of me with that assault damage control. And as you can see, he barely even touches me. I think he focused most of his attention to the drones because he assumed that my damage was coming from the drones, which <laughs> in this situation it wasn't, buddy. Faction ammo with crash booster overheated target painter is where my damage is coming from. So he's still focusing on the drones. It doesn't matter. And he dies. So there is an Inyo kill for you. Moving right along. Now, most Navy frigates and a lot of pirate frigates won't bother fighting you, but if it's a really slow night, they might because they're bored. And that's what happened with this Comet. I looked him up on Zekiel and saw that he likes to fly Kaidi Comets, so I made sure I was on the beacon at zero with a pre-overheated Scram and Micro Warp Drive. For all faction and pirate frigates, this is what I would do regardless of whether or not I think they're Kaidi. It's simply if they get away from you, you're going to have a hard time dealing with them. I had Javelin preloaded just in case he did burn away from my scram range. Javelin has a 30 kilometer range on paper, but that doesn't always mean you're going to hit. It just means you have the best chance of hitting. Really fast targets can still outrun your missiles. Now, Javelin and Navy Ammunition both have the same explosion velocity and explosion radius, so they're both going to apply their damage just as well. There's no advantage over one or the other, except that Navy Ammo has a higher damage multiplier, so it means there's more damage to apply, but Javelin has more range. And when it comes to Navy Frigates, you don't need that much damage. It's best to just have long range preloaded in case they get away. 
Also look at the fact that he's using a micro warp drive. When you do get hits, they're going to hit a lot harder. Now this particular fight normally I wouldn't take, but I wanted to do it for the video's sake just to show you what happens, and this is me in the best case scenario. I looked him up on Z-Kill, saw that his last Vexor loss was using an adaptive armor hardener, which means I don't want to fire just explosive at him because that'll start to work against me. I split my guns into two groups using EM, Rage, Nova Rage, and my thermal drones to hopefully negate the effects of that had he been using it. I don't know if he was, I just assumed he was. It wasn't enough. When they're sitting on zero in these plexes, this fit's just going to get out brawl. They're going to have more tank than you, and in a lot of situations, they're going to have as much, if not more, DPS. The Vexor is a powerhouse. It's the king of medium plexes, in my opinion, and it's just going to do way more damage than me and outlast me. Although, this was still a close fight. I did my best to burn away from him when I got in to negate his blaster damage for as long as possible. But once he gets on top of me, it's pretty much game over. So this particular buffer fit, as mentioned previous in the video, is not something you go hunting with. Use it to run plexes and defend your plexes from oncoming attacks. Skirting around the battlefield, do as much damage as you can before committing. Don't push in with this fit. Push in with the other fit. This was a tough fight up against a hawk. Hawks are really hard nuts to crack. They don't do a lot of damage, but they can tank for a long time. He has two medium ancillary shield boosters and an assault damage control. Those combined means that he has time to reload one booster while the other one's running, and the assault damage control is cooling down. So I really don't know if I could have killed him in this fight. I think I could have, but I wasn't managing my heat very well. I, for some reason, left my afterburner overheated for the majority of the fight and my invulnerability field even though I wasn't taking damage. So that was stupid. And this ended up burning out my target painter. You know, when you're fighting an assault frigate and your target painter burns out, it's usually time to go because you just don't apply to him anymore. Luckily he was an MWD fit and I have an afterburner so it means that I could leave the fight anytime I wanted to. I just didn't want to. Now he's focusing his damage on my drones which is not good for him. It's good for me. First off they're thermal drones and he has high thermal resistances but I guess he still thinks that that's where most of my damage is coming from because people don't realize that the bellicose applies really well with assault missiles I'm using faction ammo in this situation unfortunately one thing that really worked against me is I'm using a synthetic crash booster in this situation not on purpose it's just the only one I had in my cargo at the time and that's only a six percent increase to explosion velocity they did buff that it used to be 3%, but now the synthetic boosters are 6 which is great. And I kind of wanted to play around with that, but had I been using a standard crash booster, I'm pretty sure that this hawk would have been dead. And once I burned down my target painter, I just decided to burn away and warp off. So no kill, but I do think that this fit can kill a tanky hawk if you don't screw up the fight. Asking the Bellicose to be a good 1v1 cruiser is a bit of a stretch, but definitely viable as you've seen. Asking it to go 2v1 is a bit much, and that's what happens in this situation. We go 2v1 against a MOA and a Karakul. Now the MOA came in first because they assumed that had they both landed on the gate at the same time, I would have probably warped off, which is true. They were smart about that, but sending the MOA in first means that I can dictate range in the beginning of the fight and get a lot of my damage on him before he can even touch me. Whether he's afterburner or micro warp drive really doesn't matter because you can really hold range on both of those fits with this ship. The Bellicose is relatively fast. Once the Karakul comes in though, everything starts to turn around. He's micro warp drive fit with heavy assault missiles and the MOA eventually gets on top of me to apply his damage and they hit hard, but they're buffer fit and I have an ancillary shield booster, which means I'm going to outlast them assuming I can keep up with my reps. And once the MOA hits armor, he melts and we switch over to the Karakul. Now when I'm fighting other cruisers, I just load rage missiles. Uh, Rage with the target painter and the explosion velocity damage is applying most, if not all, of its damage. At least that's what it feels like to me. So it's been working and that's what I've been doing. Now in this fight I am using a standard blue pill and a 3% hard shell booster, which probably saved my butt. I'm not using any fancy crystal implants, nothing like that, but with those two boosters the XL Ancillary Shield Booster really tanks. I yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Alright, so I got one more good fight for you guys. This is against the same people in the same plex. Now normally I wouldn't stick around after somebody reships because they're almost always going to counter you and win. 
But a friendly militia member had joined me in the Plex, so we decided to stick around and see if they'd go for it. Weren't really expecting them to come in, especially after what happened last time, but they did. Their system is on the verge of being taken, so I assume they just want to get rid of their assets. There's a stabber and a caracal this time, and we go for the stabber first, assuming that it's going to be uh, auxiliary shield boosted. And it was, but his mistake was using a web instead of an invulnerability field, which is just a terrible fit for a brawling stabber in my opinion. Uh, the invul with the newts instead of the web is a way to go. But uh, yeah, this is what he had, so this is what he used. And we just out-tanked and out-DPSed him, going for the stabber first and then killing the caracal. That's pretty much all I have to say about this. So there's your Bellicose PvP video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a fun ship to fly around in. Definitely a good ship to get fights with. Even if it's not the best brawler, it's definitely really easy to get fights with. Until next time, guys, happy hunting.